Okay, 2017 was a blast in the blockchain space. Ups and downs, $2 billion raised in ICO money. We had obviously a bunch of hacks as well uh, from different websites and different wallets. And for the first time ever, I think uh, cryptocurrency is seeing mainstream adoption. Not adoption as in like, oh, we have more and more people using it, which is true. You know, Coinbase started adding something like 40, 50,000 people a day on their exchanges. What I mean by more adoption is mainstream awareness. So. Forbes, Entrepreneur.com, Business Insider, Huffington Post, pretty much everyone's talking about it. Now, that obviously doesn't mean people are adopting and using it, it's just people more aware of it, which is great news. But with that, obviously becomes, obviously you get pros and cons with that. With that being said, I think 2018 is gonna be a very interesting year in the blockchain space. And here are my thoughts of what I think could potentially happen. Number one, Bitcoin. So we saw a huge bull run in Bitcoin and uh, I think we'll see that continue. We may not see the crazy run that we saw in 2017, even though we have a lot of institutional investors and retail investors that wanna come in the space. And Bitcoin for the most part is their safest hedge. They're not gonna really get into the alts per se. And so a couple of things are gonna happen. So first of all, because of the transaction fees uh, in Bitcoin, which is really expensive, which defeats the purpose of using Bitcoin as a currency for commerce. Instead, people are using Bitcoin as a means of, or storing value, I should say. Uh, more and more retail investors will use Bitcoin as a hedge uh, for a couple of reasons. A, they have money to put in Bitcoin. B, they're not really moving Bitcoin around. And if they are, they can afford the transaction fees. So this prices out a lot of people that want to get into Bitcoin because of the transaction fees and because it's expensive. And what I mean by because it's expensive, a lot of people psychologically don't understand well, there's both technically and psychologically that you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy one tenth of a Bitcoin or you know, one hundredth of a Bitcoin is divisible by many uh, digits. Uh, so that being said, the scalability of Bitcoin is an issue in 2018. We only have about 10% SegWit adoption. We still need 90% to go. A lot of exchanges don't have SegWit. A lot of wallets don't have SegWit. So I think, I, I think 2018 will be a big focus in the Bitcoin network if they actually start adopting SegWit globally for all the exchanges and wallets and figuring out Lightning Network. Now there's pros and cons in Lightning Network. That's a whole different story. But more or less, Bitcoin will be used as a store of value with these institutional and retail investors. So we may see a big bull run on that, I don't know the prices, I don't make price predictions, but from a technical aspect, pay really close attention to the Bitcoin blockchain uh, because it needs work and they need to figure out these transaction fees fast. So that's where it comes to Bitcoin. Now, actually, another thing with Bitcoin is they have the futures right now. So something interesting about the futures with Bitcoin is it actually might create a stable price in Bitcoin. Now, yeah, the bull run will continue, and it reach a certain, let's say, point, but within that point, you'll hit a stability. And now ETFs are pretty much around the corner, they're saying, for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, with these ETFs and with these future markets, uh, investors who are looking to get a better return, that, that's a funny word, better, you know? Like, oh, I, I'm not getting my 100x return. I'm like, fuck, man, real estate's happy with 10%. People are delusional half the time. Anyways, anyways most delusional people who want 100x return, they think that's normal, they will leave Bitcoin because I really believe with the futures markets, with the ETF, with the issues of scaling. So scaling issues, transaction fees, ETF, future market, uh, institutional investors, uh, retail investors, that's eight things. I think that will, that will create a more or less stable price of Bitcoin in 2018. Now I might be completely wrong, but these are just my guesses. Create a stable, uh, stable price for Bitcoin and that will now create a, a waterfall effect where people or traders and other investors who aren't institutional investors, they will want, they want their 100x returns, right? They will waterfall away from Bitcoin and go towards the alts. I think alts will have a massive pump in 2018. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. Uh, now let's switch to scaling issues with other blockchains. Ethereum just launched on Testnet Casper, which is super fucking exciting. Uh, I think, like I mentioned earlier, I think 2018 is a big year for scaling. Now we won't solve scaling. Casper won't be solved in 2018. EOS won't be solved in 2018. I think it's a year of putting these scaling solutions or scaling ideas under a big microscope or magnifying glass to see if they're actually capable of what they're doing. For example, CryptoKitties launched on the blockchain or Ethereum blockchain and they shut it down and now they're leaving it, I believe, or something like that. I may be mistaken there as well, but I, I just read that. Uh, so scaling is a big issue in the blockchain space and we can't scale right now. They, you know, For example, Kin left Ethereum, they wanna to go to Stellar, I heard. Um, and so all these, say ICOs who promise all these amazing applications on top of these blockchains, they can't scale. 
You can't use them. They're slow, sluggish, they're horrible. So 2018, once again, doubling down and focusing on scaling. Will we solve it? No, I think solving scalability will happen 2019, 2020. Okay, so next, ICOs. The ICOs are raised ridiculous amounts of money. I think a lot of them won't deliver. Same thing like any startups, 80 plus percent of startups don't actually deliver on the product. Uh, this actually makes it worse with these ICOs because they have no accountability. At least in startups, with investors, you have a board, you have equity, you have rules, you have regulations, which is pros and cons for both. Uh, but over here, people pretty much just gave money to these ICOs with no accountability, no roadmap. Uh, and honest to God, I think we're gonna see a huge percentage of these ICOs not deliver, not ship. And uh, in the angel investing world, uh, this leads to winter. We call it the term winter, where it's gonna be very difficult for an ICO to raise money. But where I see ICOs evolving 2018, for the most part is, listen, like 1%, 2% of new tokens are legit utility tokens. The rest are actual securities. It's just a means of raising money. And I think more and more you'll see ICOs becoming securities. Uh, you'll raise money. It's gonna be no different than investing in other business where your tokens are locked up. Your tokens are, are, are locked up for X amount of time, one year cliff, two year cliff, whatever the terms you agree upon. And the actual token itself can only be listed afterwards on a regulated exchange that's completely regulated by the government as opposed to these other decentralized exchanges. So I think going in the future, we will see small cap ICOs not raise hundreds of millions of dollars. They might raise half a million to $3 million, no different than a pre-seed to series A to series B. Then the company will perform and based on their performance, they're allowed to allocate more of the token they raised and that token will be locked up and you can't touch it. I think more and more uh, of these tokens you'll see and I think it's, it's a win-win solution on both ends. It's a win for companies maybe having better access to capital around the world. Uh, you can couple that with the Jobs Act and number two, having better liquidity after a year or two for the investors themselves. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting seeing the, the advent of that coming in the ecosystem. Uh, next, um, exchanges. So I think exchanges in the blockchain space and the crypto space are a huge uh, issue. Mm, just imagine if like Bittrex or Kraken or any of these big liquidity pools or like li liquidity exchanges gets hacked, the whole market would feel it. Um, so I believe that more and more interest and adoption of decentralized exchanges will happen. This doesn't solve though the problem of onboarding and offboarding. Uh, with decentralized exchanges, at least with onboarding, you can get KYC and AML, and then you can do your wire transfer, and then you can onboard your money. Same thing with offboarding the money. You can do KYC and AML, and they can wire transfer you fiat. And uh, this is very important for traders and speculators that fuel the market. Uh, that being said, at least for now, with decentralized exchanges, they're not, they don't have that per se, not to the level uh, of these other exchanges, centralized exchanges, but centralized exchanges do hold a huge issue in the space and it's a big red alarm for me, and it's a big issue. And I think it's not, about, it's not about if, it's when. When do one of these centralized exchanges actually get hacked? Um, so that's where 2018 is gonna be very interesting. Uh, just a recap, Bitcoin, I think might stabilize in 2018. That's if there's no major issues because of the futures, because of the ETFs. Um, and because the returns aren't as great as some hoped as 100X and people will flow into other alts. Scaling for all blockchains, Ethereum, Bitcoin, EOS, Quantum, Neo, all the big exchanges, um, uh, all the big blockchains, Monero, et cetera, all of them will be focusing on how do we scale this for the millions. Uh, ICOs will not deliver, majority of them will not ship. A lot of people will get angered and a lot of ICOs will lose valuation, which will lead to more ICOs doing smaller caps and with these smaller cap ICOs, it will be securities because let's face it, literally 99% of these aren't utilities. It's just a joke, right? There's no use case for them whatsoever. It's for raising money. Decentralized exchanges will have much more adoption and a need. We need a need for decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges pose a huge, huge, massive risk for the whole stabilization of the blockchain space. And uh, at the end of 2018, I think we're gonna get into more reality of what the blockchain can do and cannot. 2017 was a bunch of hype, 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 hype. It can do all this stuff in reality. It can only do this. And a lot of people will get hurt, that's a given. And, uh, and out of this though, I think we're gonna have great innovations and I think we're, gonna, we're heading to a really good year. So that's my recap. If you have any questions for me, leave a comment below this video and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.